Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Live Lounge. I'm Mark and I work in the school's liaison team here at the university. Um, today we're talking all about careers in sport. So myself and my colleague Nick will be co-presenting today. Um, Nick, do you want to introduce yourself quickly and just let everyone know why we're here today? Yes, thanks Mark. So yes, I also work for the school's liaison team and similar to Mark, um, I'm a Lincoln graduate. So we both completely relate to the process of applying for university and, and looking at universities as well. For those of you who are new to the Live Lounge, we're here every week, mostly at the same time and on the same day, discussing various different topics um, that are beneficial um, for students that are considering university or looking at applying to university. Um, and that's just in general and um, students that are looking to start next year. Thanks, Nick. So before we introduce our colleagues from Sport and Careers, um, I just wanted to quickly highlight that if you have any questions at all whilst watching today, um, please, of course, feel free to post those in the comments below. Um, we also have our live link up, which is running on another platform in case you have any other general, um, you know, relatable questions as well to universities. So about accommodation, of course, specific questions, that's fine. I think our producer has posted a link to that in the comments for you. Um, but for now, Nick, I'm going to give you the great honour of introducing our speakers for today. Yes, so today we are joined by lecturers in sport, Dr Trish Jackman and Rebecca Hawkins. And we're also joined by careers advisor Lynn and um, graduate Jack as well. So I hope you're all well. Thanks for joining us today. Um, Mark and I are going to leave you to have your discussion around careers in sport. I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. And we will come back to you towards the end. See how you're doing. Have fun, guys. I'll make some notes. Enjoy. See you. Bye. Thank you, Nicola and Mark, for that introduction. Um, we're all delighted to be here and to speaking to you here today. I'm just going to give a little bit of an introduction and I'm going to turn to my uh, co hosts here for today. We're going to have a chat about careers in sports. So, firstly, a little bit about myself. I'm a lecturer in sport and exercise psychology here at the University of Lincoln. So, I teach across a lot of our first year uh, programs in particular. So, it gives me a great insight into uh, the experiences of those who are starting out in university. Uh, my undergraduate was in sport and recreation management, and I completed my master's in research. And also, my PhD was in the psychology of excellent performance. Here at the university, I uh, work in, from the point of view of a lecturing perspective. I do a lot of teaching on sport and exercise psychology. My research is in the psychology of excellent performance and also coordinate uh, alongside my colleague, uh, Dan Martin, the outreach activities where we work with schools here at the university. So now, firstly, I'd like to turn to my colleague, uh, Rebecca, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Thanks, Trish. So as Trish has mentioned, my name is Rebecca Hawkins. I'm also a lecturer in sport and exercise psychology within the school. Um, it might comfort you to know that I'm also a former graduate. So I did my undergraduate degree in sport and exercise science, followed by an MSc at the university, and then luckily got a little bit of a job for a short period of time as a technician. So hopefully today I'll be able to give you some of the insights from a technician's perspective as well. And then Fortunately, I got employed as a lecturer. So it's been a bit of a whirlwind journey over the last um, sort of six years now, um, but eight years, nine years in total in Lincoln. Oh, it's scary to add those years up. Um, but I'm also doing a part-time PhD alongside my lecturing role. So Trish is actually my supervisor and looks after me from a research perspective. Um, Jack, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah. Um, so kind of at the university, I guess, for at least a few more days, I'm still an MSc student, um, having graduated on the Sport and Exercise Science programme. Uh, and this year, I've kind of got a couple of extra roles within the university. One of those is as a research assistant um, with some of the biomechanics work that Dr. Frankie Malloy is doing. Um, and then I'm doing a little bit of teaching as well across first and second years um, in biomechanics and physiology. Yes. Fantastic. And thank you, Jack. And a very warm welcome to you in your first week uh, joining the team as well. So it's been fantastic to have you on board. And Lynn, do you want to introduce yourself from the careers perspective? OK, so my name's Lynn Wakefield. I'm one of the careers and employability advisors here at the University of Lincoln. Um, 
the team and I support all of our different uh, students throughout their journey, both academically and also from a careers perspective. So those of you who do decide to join us on one of our um, sport and exercise science degrees will meet me in some of your lectures because we do deliver some career sessions within the curriculum, as well as delivering loads of other services, which I'm sure I'll get the chance to share with you a bit later on. Fantastic. Thank you, Lynn. And I suppose between ourselves and between our group, we've been having a chat over the last couple of weeks. And we've also been speaking to some people about questions they might have about careers in sports. So Lynn, you were tasked with compiling these questions for us as a starting point for our discussion. So do you want to start us off there with some of your questions? I would love to. Thank you, Trish. And actually, my first one is for you as a starting point. So that's a really great introduction. I wondered if, if you could kind of tell us and, and the people that have joined us today um, about career pathways that students who complete the sport and exercise programme can pursue. Yeah, so I think a big thing about our School of Sport and Exercise Science is that, you know, we don't just focus on sport. And I think this talk is called Careers in Sport. And what we find is that a lot of our graduates are capable of going into a wide array of roles. And we have six programs at the minute. And I'll just run through maybe some examples of, of graduates who've gone on to, to get some of these roles. So I suppose one of our, our bigger courses would be sport and exercise science. So typically our graduates have gone on to roles such as sports scientists. We have technicians as well. Um, so people have gone on to, to work on the technical side of sport. We also have some of our sport and exercise science students who go on to teach training as well. And, and performance analysis is another area where we see some of our graduates from that program moving into. In addition, this was our newest program that has come on stream this year is sport and exercise therapy. And a lot of our, our new students, they'll be seeking to go into careers that could be more about private practice. So working with clients on a one-to-one on -one basis. Potentially, if they're more interested in a sports side of things, they might seek employment in professional sports, um, so professional football academies, for example. So people may have an interest in going into more of the rehabilitation setting or potentially into the, the sport performance domain. So you can um, focus on, on different areas. I think if we look at our, our PE and sports, so physical education and sport program, our students are really well equipped to, to go into initial teacher training. And I think one of the things our, our students come out is that they have real confidence in being able to go for those programs after they graduate and they're in a really strong position to do so. Some of them also move into more of the coaching and the community sport um, area too. So as opposed to focusing on more the elite side of sport, it may be more about grassroots and recreational forms of activity. Um, sport development and coaching will be quite similar, but at the same time, there can be quite diverse roles. So we tend to find that people may go into a coaching setting and that can range from professional um, academy type um, level to, again, your more recreational community oriented uh, sports settings. In addition, we do find that some of our sport development and coaching graduates do go on into initial teacher training as well. So that's another potential pathway. Um, our health and exercise graduates, I think they can cover a, a really wide range of roles in terms of some past examples of graduate employment will be in the public and, and the private healthcare sector. So if we think about schemes such as exercise referral, for example, our students are really well equipped to go into contexts that would facilitate and run programs like that. Some of our graduates have gone on to work in community engagement projects, the NHS, um, and in addition, some do go into the, the charity and the voluntary sector as well. And in terms of our SNC programs, our strength and conditioning, which is um, the first couple of cohorts have gone through on that program. Some of the graduates have landed fantastic roles over the last year or so. So we have uh, graduates who who are now in major institutions involved in the delivery of strength and conditioning to your elite high performance athletes. And in addition, some of them are running gyms or personal trainers. Now, I suppose I've gone through a lot of sport, exercise and health roles there. Um, but one thing I would say is what we find is that our students do tend to have diverse pathways after they graduate. So 
the, the, the skill set, the knowledge that you gain on some of these programs are not just going to equip you for roles in the sport, exercise and health domains. They will actually set you up potentially for roles in other areas. So what we found is some of our graduates, some example roles is we have people who've gone on to become software developers at some of the, the biggest companies in the world. You know, some people go into the military or into the Royal Air Force. We also have people I know, some of my personal two T's from last year, have actually gone into the financial sector. So th there can be quite diverse pathways that people go on from when they actually graduate. And I suppose another pathway for a lot of people is to go on to further education. So they continue on and they go on to do a master's, as was the case of uh, Jack and Rebecca, who are joining us here today. So both of them would have taken their undergrad, progressed on. And, and it's not just about undertaking masters in the sports sciences, your sport therapies. We find that some of our students and our graduates move on to education programs or special education or into public health or strength and conditioning programs. So from that perspective, we do find that people can then also add another dimension to, to themselves as they move forward. So I think our programs can definitely equip students for specific career pathways, but as well as that, there's a lot of potential transfer and movement that they can have after they graduate too. So I hope that sums up uh, the, the potential career pathways then. That's fantastic. What a brilliantly rich answer. Thank you so much, Trish. And you're quite right. It is about transferable skills as much as it is about actually getting um, a career in in the subject that you've actually studied. And we find that across across mm -hmm. the university in terms of that, which I think is, is one of the great things about uh, higher education altogether. It gives it equips people to go and do so many things of which you've described tons mm -hmm. of them. So thank you for that. So Rebecca. Experience obviously is key for gaining employment um, after graduation. And I wondered what industry experience might students um, in the School of Sport and Exercise gain on, on some of the programmes? Of course. Thanks, Lynn. Um, well, it is a really, really good question. And I think one that really sets our university and our courses apart a little bit in that we do offer so much in-depth industry relevant experience to help prepare our students for some of these fantastic roles that they go on to achieve. Um, so what I'll try and do is just give a little quick breakdown of some of the programmes and some of the relevant experience that you might actually get on those degree programmes. Um, so the first one is our physical education and sport program. Now actually within each of those years at every single level of that program you do a placement within a school. Now in the first year that's a primary school placement and then in the second and third years it's a secondary school placement. So if you're coming on to that degree probably with the intention of being a teacher whether that be in physical education or some of the other disciplines um, that certainly gives you those relevant experiences in schools in those situations to be able to make informed decisions about the route that you want to take. I'm lucky enough at the minute to have a third year physical education and sport tutor group. Um, so I've been getting UCAS references through the, you know, the email system all day long at the minute. And it's really exciting to see these students talking about, I know I want to go into primary school teaching. I know I want to go into secondary school teaching. And it's because they've had those experiences on the, their course that's informed their decision and allowed them to be so confident in what they want to go on and do. Likewise with our sport development and coaching degree, um, very similar in that again they do um, some hours within schools. They don't necessarily have to be within school though. Some of those hours at level one, which of which you'll do 20 hours in total, they can be in the community, they can be in organisations. So many of our students go out and participate in coaching activities, for example. They might go out and run alongside a sports club or a sports team for a period of time um, to really gain that, um, that real world experience and practical experiences in those environments. And again, that continues throughout the three years of of that program so 20 hours at level two and then a specialist 25 hours at level three so you're really focusing in on something of interest to you in that final year um, the strength and conditioning degree slightly different in that there's no formal placements um, but they do actually have uh, sorry there is a formal placement at level two but at level one there is just clinic practice hours now with that degree what we offer within the school is a clinic where um, external members can come into the school and receive support from the 
students in strength and conditioning and you have to obtain 15 hours in the first year so really getting you in getting your hands on early on in your degrees then in the second year you go and do a 10-week placement at a relevant um you know organization or community-based um project or placement um, and then in your final year you actually implement that for yourself so you work one-to-one -one with a client um, and you actually write your assessment about your experiences with that client so really really applied modules in that third year our newest program, so sport and exercise therapy, that includes 200 hours of placement. So, sorry, 200 hours of um, supervised experience, not placement. That would be a lot of uh, hours outside of university. Um, but building up those um, hours across your three years so that when you actually graduate from that program, you have the opportunity to then go and apply for um, accreditation after that degree. So really valuable experiences there. Um, and then finally, the health and exercise science degree, that has... Um, again community-based projects where you're allowed to or able to shadow and support a local organization to deliver and implement some health promotion programs and activities so we've had some fantastic opportunities where students have gone out and worked with dementia golf for example and then been able to again write an assessment about those experiences um, the final thing to discuss is um, the year abroad that we offer um, this is open to any of our programs, so any of the six programs. At the end of your second year, you can choose to go and study abroad for a year. Uh, the course fees are wavered, so all you have to find is your living and accommodation costs. And we have excellent links with the United States. So we have um, Appalachian State and Western Kentucky University, and then one university in the Czech Republic. Um, I, if I say it correctly, Trish, Pulaski University, um, where the students are able to go get that experience for a year of living in a different country, of experiencing a different university, uh, and seeing how the world works in different places. So hopefully that gives you a whistle-stop tour of some of the industry-relevant experiences or uh, the life experiences experiences that really equipped you as a student coming onto one of our programs. I love that not only do we offer international opportunities, but we also make sure that we um, positively contribute to our community. So the University of Lincoln is very much a community based university and I, my mum's got dementia. So hearing about dementia golf is just fantastic to, to know that we actually make sure that we, we put our efforts back into our community as, as well um, as giving our students some awesome experiences. Thank you. That was a, another brilliant answer. God, I hope you don't ask me a question. It's just not going to sound like anything as articulate as these. Um, so Trish, thinking about additional opportunities to gain experience, which might bolster a CV, as you can imagine, that's one of my key wishes, um, or aid mm -hmm. career decision making about um, a particular program or within a program what kinds of opportunities do we give our students that make sure that they have that opportunity to both bolster their cv and aid career decision yeah making? so i think one of the key things for graduates is experience and I, I don't think any of us would disagree with that when you come out with a cv at the end of your three years you will have your degree but your experience is crucial um and I think one thing within our school is that there are lots of opportunities for you to take um, right from the very first week. So I've been telling my personal tutor group today who I've met for the first time and I was speaking to them and, and saying you just it's important to grasp the opportunities. They are there. Um, and I guess just just some examples of what we do. Have. And Jack, I might get you to come in on this because I know that you yourself have made uh, the most of those opportunities over the last number of years and it's certainly paid off for you so I suppose some of the examples that of the activities we run would be um we were running opportunities fair which is where we have community groups or organizations in the lincolnshire or wider areas who come in and they actually talk about opportunities they have so essentially it's a fair whereby our students can come in they can make connections with people in our local area they can talk to them about opportunities and we would hope that essentially they're able to then go and grasp those opportunities so straight away we're actually taking making the links um, possible by bringing the community to the students in a way so it's not just a case of if you're new to the area you don't know kind of the community setting and different organizations this actually is essentially bringing this to you and showcasing some of the opportunities that do exist 
Likewise, we have a Meet the Graduates event uh, for our alumni, and that's always a, a, a huge um, hit every year where we have some of our alumni come in and they talk about the roles that they're in and how they got there. And that's, that's always a real inspirational event um, for our students. In addition, I suppose there are a number of other opportunities to gain applied experience. So our, our Impress blog, which is run by uh, Sandy Wilmot, that actually feeds information from local organizations who've been in touch with the university to say, we have this opportunity to get involved, be it as a sports scientist or as a performance analyst or, or different roles. And essentially just provides a contact point where students can then go and follow up with that and actually take on some of those roles. So at the minute we have a, a couple of internships that have been advertised in that way. I suppose in addition to that, there is also the sport and health outreach team, which is something I'm involved with with my colleague, Dan Martin. And over the last number of years, we've seen a huge growth in terms of interest in, in school groups coming in to visit our university and to, to get some experience in our human performance center in particular. And um, what we found is that we create the, the sport and health outreach team consists of student volunteers who give their time and they deliver these workshops or they assist with these workshops. So Jack, I'm sure will be able to comment on his experiences with this, but our students can start in an assistant role and they progress to being able to lead a workshop with mentoring and support from staff as well. So that's a really great opportunity to have applied sports science experience right here at the university. We also have some additional links as well, which is also fantastic. For example, Lincoln City Football Club internships have been advertised over the last couple of years. We have over a dozen students there um, every year, and that has really helped us to give students experience in a high performance setup. And again, I know, Jack, you've been involved in that, so you have touched on it. And before I hand over to Jack, I suppose another um, scheme that we have in partnership with the Student Union is the Spots and Cots programme. So what is that? That's the sport practitioner of team sport and the coaches of team sports. So every year there are a set, small number of roles that are allocated to our university teams where you can either work as a sports science practitioner or a coach. And again, that's going to give you experience at working at, at a high level of performance with athletes and in turn developing your skills. So overall, I think students across all of our programs can actually avail of these additional opportunities. And Jack, I just turn it over to you now. Can you talk us through some of the the examples of opportunities you've grasped over the, the last number of years and, and how you've gone on with them? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Trish. Um, so as Trish kind of alluded to there, um, I've, I've sort of got stuck in. I've, I've got my hands dirty, if you will, with some of the opportunities. Um, so if I just sort of go back to the sport health outreach team, um, where we can kind of assist and deliver sessions. That's something that I've both kind of taken the lead in and delivered sessions, as well as kind of supported and assisted other students and groups in doing that. Um, I guess a big thing with that is, uh, generally speaking, there are kind of a few different types of groups that might get in contact with the university um, and might be interested in that. One of which is kind of gifted and talented students from um, sort of local schools and local clubs. Um, who kind of want that bit extra exposure to, to kind of sports science to understand the benefits it can bring. Um, and a lot of the time it's quite an exciting, kind of a fun evening, both for, for the students, staff involved, but also um, the kind of external groups that come in and they can get to see a lot of the equipment uh, and kind of the processes that we go through. Um, and the other kind of groups that are quite common to come in, um, in terms of like the gifted and talented in the school groups are those that, that kind of want to open their eyes a little bit to their students um, and kind of similarly give them a heads up in terms of what sports science is and whether or not that's down the line a path that, that they might want to kind of choose from. Uh, and these are kind of, I think it's important to kind of uh, emphasize that these can be done across sort of any discipline um, in terms of psychology, biomechanics, physiology, S&C, um, so kind of whatever the student's interested in. I know I kind of did sessions for each kind of discipline um, but there's a real chance for kind of everybody to to get stuck in um, and the spots and um, sports practitioner the team sports scheme and um, was something else I got involved with in in my first year of my undergraduate degree and um, so it's kind of sort of fresh straight in um, and so a great opportunity to to start applying the things I was I was kind of learning and getting my hands kind of to grips with um, in my sort of lectures and labs and I had a kind of instant opportunity to start to see how 
things would play out in in a kind of real world scenario where the things that I would do and the, um, the kind of sessions that I could have with with the team I was working with um, could get kind of a real benefit. Um, and some of that is kind of focused alongside the Bucks teams. And um, so it's a great opportunity for people interested in kind of competitive sport to to get straight in um, and kind of experience and understand what it, what it's like to work in that environment. And likewise, also um, was fortunate enough to to be on one of the Lincoln City FC internships. Um, again, these are across a, through, a few kind of different disciplines. So I kind of did mine in performance analysis um, and some of my kind of colleagues, classmates, um, did some in sort of sports therapy, soft tissue therapy um, and kind of strength conditioning as well. Um, and that kind of as a, as a football fan is really exciting because um, you're kind of thrown in in, in elite sport um, and support kind of from the club because they're kind of welcoming you in from the uni. Uh, and you get that kind of constant support from from your tutors and the staff at the university uh, and that that kind of relationship is something that I've been fortunate enough to carry on um, so within the kind of next couple of weeks I'll be heading back there um, and doing some more work with them um, and aside from kind of the the regular ones and the formulated ones there's also some kind of great connections with local and national organizations and um, one of which is Lincolnshire Cricket um, so a couple of times across a couple of sections in kind of one period of, of the year and there's an opportunity for, for some of the really talented young cricketers to come in receive an evening of sports science support across a kind of variety of disciplines um, and it's a great opportunity to start communicating with the coaches as to things that that they can kind of look into um, which is really positive because the coaches kind of get involved as well they take a real interest in it um, all of the kind of results and a summary of that session get sent out with with the, the young athletes and the coaches um, for them to kind of work on. And then uh, fortunately to kind of round it off six to eight weeks later, they come back um, and it's a really good opportunity to, to retest them, see what's changed. Uh, and it's kind of in front of you as to kind of the impact that, that you may have had and that the university's had on, on kind of those, uh, those, yeah, those young, young athletes, those cricketers. Um, an additional one is a partnership now sort of developing with GB freestyle kayaking. Um, so last year, there's a workshop put on by Sandro, who's one of the technicians, also teaches a little bit biomechanics, um, where we had kind of world champions, junior world champions, some very high level uh, freestyle kayakers come in for the day. Um, and again, kind of run a series of workshops across kind of a lot of disciplines, um, including some kind of lifestyle management as well, which is kind of an aspect of sports science that perhaps people don't necessarily think of. Um, and yeah, so there's kind of a lot of a lot of opportunities um, and a lot of emphasis placed on getting stuck in because um, kind of a lot of people think about university and you think of lectures, you think of practical sessions, um, but kind of the, the, the stuff I've taken part in and the other opportunities that are around, um, they give you a kind of real insight as to how it would work in the real world um, and you can kind of measure the impact and it's very rewarding to kind of turn up um, and kind of make a difference in something and you can kind of see where the learning is, is coming from and where it's going afterwards. That sounds really cool. Trish, just kind of a bit of a supplementary question from that. Um, it sounds as if there are some massive opportunities for our students, not only to learn by doing, but also to build their networks with regard to their professional networks. Mm. Um, with, In fact, it's not even a question, is it? It's a statement. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And I wondered if that was an intentional part of, of providing students with the opportunities is part of it to make sure that they build their professional networks going forward yeah without a doubt and I think the one thing uh, that we do really well in the school as I said earlier is, is bringing the opportunities to the students because if I'm new to an area I'm not going to know the local organizations I'm not going to know kind of what's happening on the ground and and trying to establish those contacts in the first place can be can be challenging and and especially if it's new to you um, if you're in a new environment and you're, you're trying to, to work out things, it can, it can be challenging. So, I would, yeah, I would definitely agree. Developing networks is really important because you would be surprised how far that will get you. And, and to what extent those people could end up becoming mentors for you down the line or you may potentially be recruited by them as well. So there are definitely opportunities for you to, to grasp. And, uh, and I think that's the big thing that taking those opportunities is the, is the key. Thanks. I'm sorry to throw that one in, but I just thought, interesting. No, I think so, it's good. Rebecca, 
I would love, because I'm just always curious about what kind of gadgetry you've got within sport and exercise science, could you please share with us the kind of equipment that students will use and have access to during their studies? Yes, uh, I'd love to. Um, so one of my favourite stories is actually when one of the students who is now currently a third year student um, came to an open day and they actually said that one reason they made the decision to come to the University of Lincoln is because of all the equipment and the hands on approach that they actually were going to get at Lincoln. Um, and that is true at level one, level two, level three. You get hands on experience with some fantastic state of the art equipment within our facilities. And it only saddens me at the minute that for open days and stuff, um, we aren't able to take um, students through and round to see our fantastic facilities. But hopefully again in the near future, that will be possible. So just to give you a whistle stop tour of some of the equipment that we've got, we have a fully equipped biomechanics lab, which has got high speed um, cameras, it's got motion capture systems, which if any of you have seen any um, you know, of the games uh, on PlayStation or Xbox, something like FIFA, um, we're able to actually build up those um, skeletons on people with reflective markers to, to build profiles of individuals and really analyze and assess um, that motion that we're asking them to perform. It might be um, something as simple as a golf swing. It might be something more complicated as um, some of our researchers and colleagues are doing at the moment with trampoline, um, investigations to see you know what's the most effective way we can bounce and how many springs we should have around a trampoline um so some really fantastic interesting um, facilities uh, going on we've also got um an isokinetic dy dynamometer i know that probably sounds really fancy it's a big chair um that essentially assesses muscular strength and um we could look at imbalances between limbs between you know the sides if you've had a particular injury and we're looking to rehab um and to develop a particular area so it can allow us more focused interventions. Moving away from biomechanics, we've got two physiology suites. Um, they're equipped with a lot of, um, let's say, pain-inducing um, ergometers. So typically, we put students through their paces on treadmills, uh, in rowing, kayaking, cycling ergometers. And um, we've also got a lot of gas analysis systems, methods of taking blood, analyzing blood, um, all of which you'll get hands-on experience with at your undergraduate degree, which I think, as that student mentioned to me that one time, that's really stuck with me on an open day they couldn't believe that they were actually going to be able to use all of that fantastic equipment uh, moving further around the HPC or sorry human performance center and um, we've got a uh, an SNC suite, so strength and conditioning, um, with all the typical um, gym equipment you would find at a regular gym, but also more advanced equipment um, such as squat racks um, with weightlifting um, plates and you know really high level equipment that you probably wouldn't access in your day to day lives, and then. We also have an equipped um, sports uh, therapy suite, um, which we currently use as a clinic space where our master's students are running a clinic out of for members of staff, which is fantastic. So if you're a member of staff at the university, you're able to get some support um, from experts and also from MSc students, which is a really nice um, aspect of what we offer. Um, and yeah, really just some nice equipment in, you know, we have speed gates, for example, lighting systems, so we can measure a agility and speed um, and then more external facilities we also have that you know the physical education and sport degree we'll look at and um, sport development and coaching degree they might use our astroturf our sports hall our squash courts dance studio all of those facilities um, our students have access to and use throughout their degrees which really is a, a special point for us and one we like to to really get across to students that you get to use all of this stuff <laughs> Wow, fantastic, thank you. Trish, I think we were going to pick up whether or not we'd had any yes. questions. From... So I'm starting to see a, a couple of questions in the chat here now. Um, so I think it'd be great actually to speak about your experiences here, Rebecca and Jack. So Rebecca, I might start with you. What skills and abilities will I develop in my degree that will help me with my career? Of course, what a great question. Uh, thanks, George, for 
putting that to the forefront for us. Um, the first thing I'd like to start off with the fact that there's so many transferable skills. So you learn, yes, sports specific, um, so subject specific knowledge um, relating to your degree. So yes, it might equip you to be a sports scientist, to be a strength and conditioning practitioner, um, to go out and work in health related um, job roles. But also it gives you lots of additional skills that will help you obtain those roles that Trish was talking about earlier that maybe aren't sport focused you know um, we have plenty of students that come through our degree programs and have never really had too much of an interest in going into a sports specific career but what our our, um, our degree programs actually prepare prepare those students for is those broader job roles because some of the skills just to list a few you get those experiences with real world clients so as I mentioned earlier you're going out into the community you're going out into sports teams you're going out into organizations and learning some of the skills that would be required for managerial roles for example so many of our students do go into non-sport related managerial roles such as you know working at um, companies where I think we've had Audi, Tesco, Sainsbury's you know, to name a few, Aldi, those um, those management positions. Um, and that's because their, their skills that they've acquired actually allow them and permit them to do that job. Some other skills you might gain is planning skills, research skills. So in your third year of your degrees, you do do an independent study. So you undertake what's called a dissertation. Um, essentially, we let you loose and you get to go and conduct your own research study that you've designed, planned and prepared for throughout your degree starting at level two um, so I think that's fantastic for our students to actually be able to go out and do something that they've spent a long period of time planning and I think a lot of students as well feel really rewarded that's certainly how I felt coming away from my degree that I'd planned something and I'd actually followed through with that and conducted a research study for myself so that's certainly one um, aspect that you get additional um, not a qualification in, but experience in that would then qualify you to go on and do different job roles. Um, you also get leadership skills. You're able to work independently. So particularly in those third year modules where you go out and you work in those applied settings, they're very much independent. You know, you're self-managing your time. You're managing your own schedule to not leave clients without anyone turning up to their sessions. They're all skills um, that you need in your day-to-day -day lives and in any you know job role that you go into. Teamwork skills, problem solving, particularly communication skills. You know, we gear a lot of our assessments in the school around actually how you communicate um, with other students, but also in presenting skills. So there are lots of opportunities to give presentations, to deliver, you know, group presentations to a vast array of audiences, which really help build those communication skills. One of the things I certainly love is seeing my tutor group go from these quiet little mouses in their first year where they don't want to speak and then I can't shut them up in their third year because they've gained so much confidence that they just want to talk all the time and you know they want to know what their next opportunity is to be in front of someone and actually present and go out and speak um like I said earlier, those self-management skills, but also self-reflection and self-awareness skills, looking back on something you've done previously, how you've developed and how you've progressed and working under pressure. I think a lot of our students find this out worse and worse as they go through that, you know, they have to become a bit better at time management. They self-reflect on those activities and hopefully then build on their own capabilities to, to manage their time effectively, work under pressure and meet those deadlines. Um, I think it'd be probably a timely point as well I know you've I've blabbed on about my experience as a student but Jack maybe you could give us one key aspect that you think you've taken away from your undergrad and postgraduate study what's your key skill you'd say you've gained um so yeah there's, there's kind of a lot to pick from uh, as you've kind of said gone through quite a long long list of skills but I think one would be the, the kind of communication skills and the ability to become confident in that um, so in my third year of my undergraduate degree, the school supported me to go to the BASES conference. Um, so for those of you that don't know, BASES is the British Association of Sport and Exercise Science, and it's kind of the largest sport and exercise science association uh, in Britain. Um, and they, they hold a, a student conference each year um, where kind of students come together and present their, uh, their, their dissertations or other kind of studies and work that they've done. Um, so I was fortunate enough to get the support to, to go up to Dundee a couple of years ago. Um, and, and have the confidence and the communication skills to to talk to people about 
about my study, which um, kind of looked into mental toughness and kind of pain perception. Um, and I guess this has kind of gone off off a little bit, but by kind of developing the skills and getting the support to do that, there are kind of other benefits. So you're, you're put in a situation where um, you've got loads of like-minded students around you to network with um, and, and kind of other academics are from other institutions as well. Um, and it's kind of a great opportunity to to develop the communication skills more so even when you get there. Um, so I, I sort of got in contact with a couple of lecturers and a couple of staff from other universities that perhaps had studied kind of similar areas that my dissertation study was in. Um, and it's kind of uh, kind of a nice circle that, that the support in my kind of communication and confidence skills gave me the opportunity to do that, which in turn then helped helped kind of develop them further. Yeah, I would say as somebody who witnessed your presentation, Jack, I can testify that you did a fantastic job on that day and, and you were posed with some excellent questions from academic members of staff as well as students on that day and answered them very competently. So well done on that one. I, I certainly recall that, that experience. Um, I suppose I might chip in just before because I know there's a couple more questions in the chat. Um, in terms of skills, there's also maybe the added element of additional qualifications you might get along the way as well that would be worth mentioning. So on the sport and exercise science, health and exercise science programs, there is potential to gain additional uh, qualifications or certificates in things like personal training or gym instructor. Um, one of the, the I suppose, nice things about our strength and conditioning program, the real assets of it, is that it is now accredited by the National strength and conditioning association and also if our students um gain a, a, a an upper second uh, or a 2-1 degree and they also gain enough experience along the way they can actually apply to be internationally accredited strength and conditioning practitioners which is obviously a fantastic thing to be able to, to bolster your cv and also a lot of skills that would have to be developed along the way with that and in, in addition to that across all of our programs our students will be equipped in terms of they have the opportunity to apply for something like the Lincoln Award um, as well. So in, in saying that, I suppose I wanted to come back on a question on that because I know Lynn, you talk to us a lot in your team about career skills. It's probably a good point um, for you to kind of give us an insight into the access to career support over the, the course of, of your programme. Okay, so as I mentioned right at the beginning, we do actually come and deliver some um, very sports and exercise science um, focused careers talks within your curriculum um, and we've developed along with your academics a good range of um, different mix in terms of the programs for that but in terms of central career service and, and I love that you've been talking about transferable skills for the last few minutes because one of the things that we're able to support our students with is to reflect on their transferable skills but also to undertake a skills assessment which not only gives you an opportunity to reflect on where you are at currently with your skills but also gives you some great ideas about skills that you may want to enhance further and some ideas about opportunities for you to do that. Um, and Trish mentioned the Lincoln Award, which is one of my favourite programmes in terms of giving students an opportunity to participate in something which is specifically for the University of Lincoln and gives our students an opportunity to learn new skills, network with different individuals and also kind of get credit for some of the skills and activities that they've undertaken, be that through volunteering or through employment. But my very favourite part of the Lincoln Award is that at the end of it, in order for you to um, be accredited in terms of the Lincoln Award, you go through an assessment centre, which is a proper live employer um, facilitated assessment centre. So you get the chance to undertake some of the activities that you're very likely to be asked to undertake when you apply for job roles once you've finished your university studies. Um, and it's in a really safe environment because it's not actually real. So although we are running it and we really do run it and we ask students to come professionally dressed and we do ask them really tough questions in, in a one to one interview and we give them some really interesting um, group activities to do, we then give students feedback on that. So in, an, in a high pressure because it's taken seriously but no risk situation you actually then get some really good feedback both from an employer's perspective but also from the careers team as well um, and what we do do from that is we think about 
not only so here's your feedback but here's what we can do to help you to improve um and again you know although with the best will in the world an employer will sometimes give you feedback on how you've done in an assessment center it's pretty unlikely that they'll then say and actually why don't you come to this workshop that we're running next week and we'll help you with this specific bit because we've kind of figured out that that might be something that we can support you with and that you'd benefit from getting some support with. So everything that we deliver from the careers and employability team, we hope are very much tailored to what it is that our students are experiencing across the academic year and also the feedback that we get from students either via lectures or from academics or directly from students when they're accessing our services. Um, so we've got loads and loads of online learning. We've um, excelled in terms of now being able to create all sorts of webinars, um, which are beautiful and professional, as well as some not, some not so professional ones, which I've gibbered on about in terms of creating resilience for yourself in the workplace and things like that. So uolcareers.co.uk is a really good place for anyone who's listening to this to go and visit have a rummage around there are loads of things on there that even when you aren't a University of Lincoln student you can have a look at so you can get a flavor of the kinds of services that we then offer all of our students once they join us um, we have weekly clinics in fact we have daily clinics where we can support students to create CVs applications we can help you to um, create ideas for yourself in terms of where you might like to get work experience we bring loads of employers on campus i'm so excited about how many um top 300 graduate employers we've got coming on campus virtually this year i'm, I'm giddy with excitement about it sorry um but just in october we've got 14 top 300 so that's one nearly every day of the academic sessions that we're running we've got an employer on every day who is delivering to our students inside tips on what it's like to work in those organizations but also some really good top tips on how to get through their application processes um, and I think actually being online this year has meant that even more employers than normal have got the capacity to engage with us so we're really benefiting from that which I just mm -hmm. think is awesome so we also have a really good careers facility on our Blackboard site. So as a student, you will get access to Blackboard. And one of my favorite tools on it is the um, video interview simulator, which is as scary as it sounds. So basically you can set your own interview questions and you can then video yourself answering them. And although it sounds a bit weird, it's a really great thing to do, especially now. So even if we're applying for part time jobs or we're looking for volunteer opportunities, a lot of people, their first sift with us is going to be an online interview or a video interview. So we've got the tools that can help our students to make the very best of themselves in those situations. And to kind of complement that, we've got lots of workshops which we run, one of which is now on online interviewing, so that not only can we encourage students to look at themselves and practice, but also we give them them hints and tips in the first place rather than just leaving them to figure it out for themselves, because that would be mean. We also offer one-to-one -one guidance appointments. So there where um, we'll work with the student to explore options and to provide them with some support and different tools on decision making. We also offer industry specific appointments. So if a student's got a specific industry that they're interested in knowing more about, but they're a bit stuck with regard to research, we can help them with that. We can provide them with some top tips. And if we've got the opportunity, we'll also put them in touch with some alumni who have perhaps working in the industry that the student's interested in finding out more about. Now then, come on, Lynn, you can't just tell everyone everything. OK, so another thing that I'm really, really excited about is we've got this awesome online mentoring platform called Lincoln Connect. And what we've done is we've invited lots of alumni onto that platform who are prepared to offer online mentoring to our current students. So it's another fantastic way of our students taking a toe dip into some particular areas of industry or some particular roles that they're interested in finding out more about. Um, it's obviously free, but students, it's really easy to sign up. Students do need to think about what they want to get out of that mentoring relationship in order to make the most of it. And again, we can coach them through that so we can support students to think about how can I approach a mentor? What do I want to get out of it? How will I know when it's been successful, etc. So it's, that's a really good, good, good tool. Yeah. 
I think I'll shut up now. Otherwise, I, as I said to you right at the beginning, I'll just carry on forever if I get excited about careers. Yeah, I think, um, and I think the, your enthusiasm is, is infectious, <laughs> and I think it carries across your whole team because yeah. I know myself as a personal tutor, and Rebecca will verify, and also Jack from your experiences as a, as a student. Um, within our school we have careers embedded within our personal tutoring program year on year in year out so i think that actually gives a great opportunity to our students to get exposure to this right throughout their degree program so they're thinking about it from year one which is always great we've got a couple of comments here i'm just gonna scroll through um, we've got a comment here from helen um, and I think this actually chimes really well with some of the points we've had earlier today. And Helen said, my son graduated with the Sport and Exercise Science degree at Lincoln, initially went into performance analysis internship and then trained as a science teacher and had a brilliant time. So Helen, feel free if your son ever wants to get in touch. We'd love to hear about his experience and, and his uh, pathway to, to get to become a science teacher. It's fantastic. And we wish him all the best with that as well. And we'd we love him on Lincoln Connect as well, the online commentary we platform. <laughs> yeah, so Helen, if you can you can get us in touch with it for Lincoln Connect, we'll put some details maybe in the chat and our, our hosts will be able to assist you with that. We've got another question and Rebecca, I might turn to you with this one. Um, what top tips would you give a potential student thinking of a sport exercise science degree in the autumn of 2021. So next year's cohort, what would your advice be? Gain as much experience as you can. I know it's going to be difficult in the current circumstances, depending on how and if they change uh, as we move into 2021. Hopefully things will resemble a sense of normal normality by then. Um, get yourself out, get yourself doing some voluntary experience, because what a lot of students find is that, yes, you have all these fantastic opportunities, but maybe you don't have the time to take all of them up. And particularly, I remember my summer after finishing my A-levels where I had a bit of time suddenly to do some something and, you know, really get in some additional experience. And it doesn't necessarily have to be um, qualifications. It can just be if you're interested in teaching, going along and helping out with summer clubs at schools or summer camps. Um, if you're interested in coaching or working within a sports team, can you get yourself some links or go along and just be there and be in that environment to get familiar with it so that you know a little bit more about what you're going to experience when you come to university? Um, also is to start getting in touch with the right people. Um, I know I was particularly lapsed at doing this. And one thing I wish I'd done is start to make some of those connections prior to coming to university. So all of us here at the university are pretty big on Twitter. Um, we all have our independent profiles, but also school profiles, which I would urge you to go and follow. You can find information for that all on our website. You'll be able to see um, what individual research teams are up to. Many of us throughout the summer months are conducting research. I had lots of my first year students before they actually came to university. They came in and were participating in research and really valued that experience because actually they had participated in research that they were going to be writing about and trying to read and understand into their degree. So, you know, they were coming up to me in their second year is going oh it was brilliant that I participated in that because I understand that study from the inside out and you're able to do that if you know what's going on within the school so by all means start to follow us on social media look at some of the links that we offer and get involved where you can there the opportunities are there as we've mentioned all the way through this um, it's just on you to make that first step and approach one of us and or make that first link by I'm not doing a shout out for followers here but you can follow me on Twitter uh, if you do so wish yeah fantastic and I think a lot of the updates from our school we have a very active Twitter account so that's at Lincoln Sport X so if you want to give us a follow there you hear all of the latest and we do a lot of the times have blogs from our students actually talking about their experiences so recently we had a number of blogs from students who were involved in the Sport and Exercise Psychology Journal Club. And the students have actually talked about their experiences and, and how beneficial experiences like that were for them. Jack, I might just turn to you um, with a similar question, but if you could go back and put yourselves in the shoes of your first year self, and you could go back and I suppose do that final year before you went into first year, what one thing might you do the same or would you do differently? What would your advice be? Um, 
I guess in, in terms of prior to that first year, um, again, I just kind of emphasise and echo what Rebecca was saying about kind of getting ahead of the curve a little bit um, in terms of once you start to kind of get active and follow the school on Twitter and follow uh, the kind of the staff, the academics on, on Twitter or other kind of social media. Um, and you can start to almost see some of the some of the topics that are going to come up. Um, and I know I kind of did a little bit of research, knew kind of roughly who who enjoyed researching what, and um, that that kind of made made that first section kind of not alien. That first first term, I already kind of knew who people were. Um, from a personal point of view, that's kind of big in settling into university, but also in terms of the education, if you, if you kind of have a head start on what you're going to learn. Um, that kind of that kind of smooths that process as well. Um, in terms of once I was kind of there, uh, just simply I'd kind of go back and kind of get stuck in again in everything, um, and I just kind of emphasise that as well. That there are a huge number of opportunities and a huge kind of depth in quality of opportunities. Um, and so taking taking the education side of it, what you learn um, and kind of the equipment you learn to use, and, and being able to kind of really um, apply that to to kind of what real world situations we kind of alluded to earlier um that's kind of the second thing that I'd, I'd really emphasize yeah fantastic and i think it also highlights as well one thing which is key in our school is that sense of community and uh, we very much feel that as staff and as students we we are one and we are a community we work together we've really strong kind of staff student engagement um, not only in our teaching, but across our research and across any consultancy or enterprise work we do as well. So I think um, that sense of community is something that will help any new first years coming in to um, our school in, in 2021. And we hopefully will have a large cohort. And I think at this point, uh, we've probably almost run out of time at this stage. So if our co-hosts, uh, if you want to come back in and to, to wrap things up. That was um, amazing. Thank you so much. That was really, really good. Um, I think in particular, it was it was great to know about the array of different careers that um, students can go into afterwards. And you're quite right. All those transferable skills are so important um, that you get from a degree to take through to um, a job afterwards. And I know from my degree, I learned lots of transferable skills, skills that have got me where I am today. So that's fantastic. And Lynn, I'm so interested to know about that video interview simulator i think that sounds amazing <laughs> that's really interesting <laughs> okay once you get yeah, past the mark. Mark. <laughs> yeah i just i just think the passion <laughs> that you guys have is unreal um yeah i agree with nick as well i found it really interesting and i feel like i'm back at university because i have been making notes um and something that i really really enjoyed um at the beginning actually was um about putting back into the community and with the um the dementia golf i thought that was that was really interesting because those students as you say they get that experience but you're also giving back as well, which I thought was really nice. And um, I noticed, Trish, you mentioned about the um, open days. And obviously, it's such a shame that we can't have the physical open days at the moment with the guidance and whatnot. But I just wanted to quickly highlight that we do have a virtual open day coming up. Um, and it's on Saturday, the 14th of November. So if anyone wants to book onto there, please go onto our website. And um, it is still a really good experience. And the beauty is you can just have a cup of tea at home. Uh, <laughs> And, and watch from there really um but yeah i just i found it really interesting and really relatable so thank you so much um and the questions have been great as well so thanks everyone for asking those questions um and helen you know i'm really pleased that your son had a great time with us as well um but before you know we finish this week's live lounge i just wanted to let um everyone who's watching know um that next week our colleagues emma and ellie will be hosting uh, the live lounge the same time um and day next week um, and that will be on personal statements um, with two of our Lincoln students. So it's definitely one for everyone to watch out for, because I'm sure a lot of you at home are working hard on your personal statements at the moment. So it'll be really, really uh, relevant, hopefully. Um, but, you know, if anyone's got any questions still, you're welcome to still post comments. That's fine. Um, we have guys working on the comment section every day anyway, so don't worry about that. And of course, um, we've got our email as well. So that's inquiries at lincoln.ac.uk. Also, our social media team do take inquiries on direct messages so feel free to pop a message on any of our social medias and um, for any questions that you have about Lincoln really um, but I think that's it for today so thank you so much guys and um, so I think that's it Nick isn't it yeah it's been brilliant thank you so much thank you for all your questions and uh, we'll see you next week bye thank you bye